a little higher, but it's close enough to be happy. Think about why L should have been taken a little larger. Now, one more very interesting oscillation. A torsional pendulum. There's a wire there, two and a half meter steel wire, and it's hanging something on the bottom which we're going to offset, and then it's going to oscillate back and forth. That's called a torsional pendulum. And we're going to calculate the period of oscillation of a torsional pendulum, and they have wonderful properties. They're in a way like a spring, like a one-dimensional spring. Remember the one-dimensional spring that we had a period which was independent of the amplitude? Well, within reason, of course. If you make the amplitude too large, then you get permanent deformation of the spring. But we never had to make any small angle approximation with the spring as we had to do with the pendulum. Here is the pendulum, the torsional pendulum. This is a bar. And there is a weight here and there's a weight here. I'll tell you more about that later. It's hanging here from the ceiling. It has a certain length L. This is point P. And we're going to twist it and then we're going to let it oscillate this bar in a horizontal plane. So when you look from above, you will see the bar here, see point P here, and then we can offset it over an angle theta and then it will oscillate back and forth. The, the torque relative to point P is now very similar to what we had with a spring. We have a minus sign, again that illustrates that it is restoring, instead of a K now, we have kappa, which is what we call the torsional spring constant, and now we have an angle which we call theta. So we generate a torque which is proportional to the angle, very similar to the linear spring whereby we generate a force which is proportional to the linear displacement. Now you generate a torque which is linearly proportional to the angle. And this is the moment of inertia about point P times alpha, and alpha is theta double dot. So we're going to get that theta double dot plus kappa times theta divided by I of P equals zero. And kappa, by the way, is the torsional constant. So we have a differential equation. It's clear that you're going to see a simple harmonic oscillation. This is a constant. And so you're going to get theta equals theta maximum times the cosine omega t plus phi. It's getting boring. This is the angular frequency, angular frequency, and angular frequency is the square root of kappa divided by the moment of inertia about point P, and therefore the period, which is two pi divided by omega, equals two pi times the square root moment of inertia about point P divided by kappa. Well, how about kappa? Kappa is a function of the cross-sectional area here, A, and the length L. And it's also a function of what kind of material you have. Whether you have steel or nylon makes a big difference. That's very intuitive, of course. Remember that in an earlier lecture, when we stressed a wire to the point that it was breaking, we dealt with Young's modulus. We had a wire and we had a mass hanging at the end of the wire. And we discussed the vertical oscillation. We could stress it and let it go. And then we would get an oscillation like a spring. And that spring constant that we found then was Young's, Young's modulus times the cross-sectional area here divided by the length. And that was kind of pleasing. The thicker the bar, the stiffer it is, the longer the wire, the less stiff it is. Well, there is something very similar here, but I don't want to go into the details of exactly how you derive here kappa. It's a little bit more complicated. But indeed, the same is true 
if you make the wire thicker, then kappa will go up, and if you make the wire longer, kappa will go down. That's immediately obvious. If you had a very short rod, and you try to twist that rod, it's clamped at the top, and you twist it, and it's very short, you would need a tremendous torque for 10 degrees. If you make the wire 100 meters long and you want to twist it 10 degrees, it takes nothing. So you can immediately see that, of course, the value for kappa, the torsional constant, is a function of the length. It will go down when the length goes up. We have a wire here which is two and a half meters long, and the thickness of the wire, the diameter, according to the manufacturer, it's a piano string, uh, the thickness is 25 thousandths of an inch. And if I calculate kappa to the best of my ability, then I find that kappa should be very close to four times 10 to the minus four newton meters per radian. And so all we have to do now is to calculate the moment of inertia of the system, and then we can predict what the period of this pendulum is going to be, which is not my goal. You'll see my goal is going to be a different one. Look at the bar and look at the wire. The wire is so thin that the moment of inertia relative to point P of the wire is very close to zero. Remember, it is proportional to R square. You can forget about that. Almost all moment of inertia is in this system. I'll blow up that system for you. Here it is. You'll see it there. And it has on both sides, it has 200 grams. It is 0.2 kilograms. And it has here 0.2 kilograms. And this mass is almost negligible. And this distance here is 30 centimeters. And this distance is 30 centimeters. So to a very good approximation, the moment of inertia for rotation about that point P, this rotation, will be this mass times radius squared plus this mass times radius squared. So that it will be twice, because I have two masses, times the mass times the radius squared. And that is about 0.036 kilogram meters squared. And so when I use that into our equation, so I know now what kappa is, at least I have a reasonable idea what kappa is, and I know what I of p is, that's really l almost exclusively determined by that crossbar, I will find then, using that equation, that the period is very close to 60 seconds. My goal is not to prove to you that it is close to 60 seconds. My goal is to show you that for this dimension, which is very thin and very long, that we can make that angle theta maximum, this angle, amazingly large. You're not talking about 10 degrees or 30 degrees. We can go much further. And what I want to test with you is how far we can go. This is one of the great things in life, for you and for me, a challenge. How far can you go and get away with it? There comes a time that if we make the angle too large, that we permanently deform the wire. It will not come back to its original position. The same happens with a spring. If you take a spring, it is true that the period of oscillation is independent of the amplitude, but only up to a point. If you go too far that Hooke's law no longer holds, that you deform it permanently, then, of course, the period will become a function of the extension, and the same is true here. So if we twist it too much up, then of course we will permanently deform it, and then the period will not be independent of theta maximum. Having said that, I would like to start asking you for advice. What kind of angle in this direction shall we start with? What do you think is reasonable without total torture for the wire. And then we'll write down the times. So we're not really interested in testing the 60 seconds, but we would rather like to compare the various angles that we give it. So what is the first one we will, we will try? Any idea? 30 degrees? What? 
The first try, you are cruel. Man, the first one you want six pie, you're out of your mind. I'm willing, I'm willing to go one ro rotation, OK? You think that's nothing. It's peanuts for you, right? OK, I would like to go theta maximum of 360 degrees, so 2 pi, and measure the periods. In fact, to measure the period takes a minute, and it's not necessary. We can measure half a period, namely, we wait until the pendulum stops, and we measure the time until it stops again. That's half a period. Like with a spring, if it stops here and it stops there, that's half a period. So we'll measure half a period. Now, I don't know what my reaction time is going to be. It may be not a tenth of a second, because the moment that it stops is not so well defined, you will see. I'm just guessing. Probably a little larger than one tenth of a second. Let's give it a shot. Let's try first 360 degrees. You see, this is black and this is a little red, so we will rotate it one rotation. This is back here where it was. Yeah, have you seen that? 360 degrees. Okay, now I will first let it go and wait until it stops. I always do that, and then I start the time. And then when it stops again, I'll stop the time and then we have half a period. So let's first do its own thing. Very slowly, very gently. Should take roughly 30 seconds for half a rotation. So you'll see now that it, now at equilibrium again, because we wound it up one rotation and so back to equilibrium. And now it's going to stop very shortly. And when it stops, I want to start the timer. Now! Okay, so now it goes back, and we wait until it stops again. That gives us half a period. Okay. Now. 28.75, 28.8. What are we going to do now? Three rotations, five rotations, three. Are we in favor of three? Who is responsible for permanent damage to the wire? Do you accept responsibility in life? Three is a lot. Three is six pi, man. Six, I can start it, because it will take a while before it stops. Three rotations. First, we have to be sure that it is more or less back at equilibrium, which is always a difficult thing, because it's so slow. Yeah, close enough. Okay, three. Shall we go clockwise or counterclockwise? Should make no difference. I went this way first. Shall we go back? Yeah? You can sleep with that? OK? OK. One, two, three. Six pi. Piano wire. OK, let's go. I will start the timer when it stops. We have some time. Six pi. We rotate it six, three times, and it will rotate six times back before it stops. I hope you realize that. Was I too late? Thank you for pointing that out. So if you rotate it three times and then let it go, it goes first three times back, then it's equilibrium, and then it winds three times up again before it stops. Not notice it's going much faster now, but the time, that's the whole thing should be very close to that number again. Twenty-eight 
28.5. Who? Not bad. Shall we now go all the way? What do you want to do now? Break the wire or 10 rotations? You'd love to see that, right? It will go like mad, 10 rotations. Isn't it amazing how much faster it goes? Shh, shh, shh. Still 30 seconds. Must make sure that I have my equilibrium. This was not equilibrium. I know it's somewhere here. No, that wasn't equilibrium. I think this is it. Okay. Ten, right? Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Poor wire. We'll let it go and we'll see what happens. When it stops, I'll start the time. Excuse me? Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Look how fast it's going. I mean, it's really going wacko. It has to do all that in 30 seconds. No! So now it has to go back to its stopping. It has to make 20 rotations now. 20 rotations in 30 seconds. 10 back to equilibrium and then ten to come to a halt. This is going to be your Thanksgiving farewell demonstration. No! Twenty-nine point two. Fantastic.